Hey everyone, welcome to the Boeing CST-100 Starliner Trainer here at NASA's Johnson Space Center, training the astronauts for our first flight and every flight going to the International Space Station and training our crews right now in Houston in this ingress, egress, and static astronaut trainer is where our astronauts get familiarized, or get to know, if you will, our spaceship. From the seats inside, how you buckle in, how, where every switch, where, where the console is, where the cargo is, our astronauts get familiar with what their day of launch operation will be like when they're on the pad in Florida getting ready for flight. Right now, the three of us are sitting inside the crew module of the CST-100 Starliner. Um, the crew module is this volume that we're in right now where the crew will spend the entire flight to station. Uh, so I'm right now in the pilot seat. Uh, Steve is in the commander seat and Tony is in the mission specialist seat. So this is actually the configuration of our CFT, our crewed flight test uh, mission. So there will be three crew members um, and they'll be seated just like this. So we have tons of extra volume in here that we're not utilizing right here. It's kind of hard to utilize when we're on the ground in one gravity. Uh, but once we get on orbit, the crew members can unbuckle their seat restraints, which we're not wearing right now, but they can unbuckle their seat restraints and kind of float up, hang out. They've got a lot more volume in here um, to, to spend the time going to station. That trip can um, be as quick as about six hours. And what this vehicle that we're actually sitting in right now is used for it's training and testing. So this, um, you might be able to tell just by looking at it, it's not a real spacecraft. Um, there are a lot of things mocked up with 3D printing, um, some plywood things. So it's, it's a trainer that the astronauts are using right now actually um, to train for the missions that, that they're gonna fly on. Um, so geometrically, spatially, volumetrically, very high fidelity. So as you can see, it's um, a pretty standard capsule design. It sort of harkens back to Apollo, Mercury, Gemini era uh, when you look at it, especially from the outside. It's spatially a lot more efficient on the inside and the systems are way more advanced. The most recent space program that we had here in the States, the shuttle program, if you've ever seen the cockpit of a space shuttle, there are switches and buttons within on every surface within reach of the commander and the pilot. So it's kind of overwhelming when you step in and you don't know what it is. There's so much stuff to think about. On this vehicle, this is everything. So if Steve kind of reaches his arms around, you can see everything is within reach of the commander. There's way fewer buttons, way fewer switches. And the reason for that is because our missions um, can be automated the entire way. And that's how we plan on flying, is automating the entire thing from, from liftoff to docking with station and on the way back. The crew member really doesn't have to fly the vehicle. And the benefit of that is that we can focus the training for these astronauts on their actually the science missions that they're going to be doing once they're there on station. 